Hey guys, this is Mike Milo. Uh, I am going to show you a little bit about how to use Storyboard Pro for drawing purposes. Just the basics. Uh, so, well, the first thing you got to do is start up Storyboard Pro. If you have Storyboard Pro 22, it's all pink, so you can't miss it in your, on your uh, desktop. Um, I'm going to start a new file. Uh, one thing that you need to know about Storyboard Pro is that you can't put spaces between your your like if I type in if I type in uh, storyboard and then I hit a space you'll see that it puts it under score in there so that's something to know um, you'll notice that at the beginning here you'll have a project name that's the one you're gonna call it uh, you'll notice that there's a project directory underneath it. Um, you want to browse to find where you're going to put that. Uh, then you have a project title, and you'll notice that there's a project subtitle. For storyboarding, the reason that they do that is because you would have the project title, The Simpsons, as the show, and the project subtitle would be the episode. Um, the rest of this stuff doesn't really matter to you at the moment. Uh, even if we're talking about DPI because Storyboard Pro is natively vector, so it doesn't require any DPI until you export it and then you have the option to make it um, higher anyway. So once you create this name, you're going to call it, uh, you're going to, and you've all made sure you know where it's going, um, you're going to create your project. And now that you have your project, you're presented with an interface here. Um, you'll see on the left side, this is where your toolbars are. You're going to use this stuff the most. Um, this stuff really doesn't affect you very much for right now, um, except for another file. You can uh, open a file, you can save, and you can save as there. So they may be useful. You can also do that here under New under file you can do you know the same thing save open close and uh new uh, save as so all right so now here we go so we've got um the toolbar this here this is called your um your stage um and you may not see the black area around it there is a little mask for it to show you only what the camera sees um, or what the export is going to see. So that's the size, the real size. But you can draw off the page if you want as well. Just, you know, in the margins, if you're kind of testing things out, you don't want to be on the main page. Anyway, um, so that, uh, then after the stage, we have over here, we have the thumbnail view. This is also the timeline view, but you're not going to use the timeline. Timeline is for you know, doing boards and thumbnails is useful for doing um, just drawings individually. So down here is the timeline. Um, and then you'll see that to the right of the, um, of the stage, you have your layer view. Um, and past that, you will see your tool properties view. There's also a color view, the tool properties view, um, and there's also a library view. The tool properties view is used in conjunction with the toolbar, which makes sense. But if you notice, as I click on each one of them, the options change because the options for every tool in Storyboard Pro is under tool properties. So you wanna make sure that you have this tab um, active. If you don't have it active, one way that you can make it active is to go to Windows and scroll down to tool properties. You'll see it and it will pop up. So if I get rid of it, and Windows Tool Properties, it will pop back. Okay. If by some reason you you get rid of it and you want, if there's another way to do it. You can click this plus sign and you can access any of the options, the, the tab options in the program. Okay. So now that we've shown you the basic tools, this is the basic way to draw. is pretty simple. Um, you're going to select your brush tool here. And once you select that, you're going to have a whole bunch of options here. You have some different options probably for the default storyboard um, brush pens. And uh, 
so I don't, I don't really know what you guys have, but this is where all the brushes are. There's two different types of brushes in Storyboard Pro. There's three, but two using the brush tool. Um, one of them is soft brushes, which is more like, uh, like a, a bitmap brush. And then there is the vector brushes. Um, those are the two main things that most people use. Um, however, Storyboard Pro is very good with um, using bitmaps as well. And so if I go over to my uh, layer area, you can see that down at the very bottom here, I have options. The little plus sign next to the um, different uh, icons indicates that I can add. So if I want to add a vector layer, I will click these colorful shapes that will add a vector layer. If I want to add a um, bitmap layer, I will hit this scenic icon and that will add a bitmap layer. Now, the way that you can tell the difference between the two, you'll notice is that a vector layer is gray. There's a little swatch here on the side, a little line that's gray. You'll see that the, um, the bitmap one creates a blue little hash mark, whatever you call it, I don't know, line. And that indicates that it's a bitmap one. Drawing with a bitmap is actually very different than drawing with, um, with uh, vectors. Um, there actually, I don't even have any tools for it. Um, anyway, so, because uh, I, don't, I don't really use the bitmap brush much, but you might like it. Anyway, um, that's how you do both of those. Um, if you want to create new brushes, you can create them. This gets a little complicated, so I'm not really going to go into the many details of it. But the number one thing you can do is press this plus button and it will create a new brush. You can call it what you want, click OK, and the brush will show up. Um, if you want to change the options of the brush, uh, you click this arrow here. And there's a whole bunch of brush options. It is... Uh, there's a lot of complicated stuff here. I don't really know. I don't use much of this stuff, but you might like it. Just remember that anything that has what's called a texture here, you see these textures here, they take up more resources and they could slow down your computer if your computer is slow or if you put too many of them. You do 6,000 strokes of something in this brush and it's gonna grind your computer to a, uh, a halt. So remember that because you don't want to lose that beautiful work that you're doing. So um, one other thing you can do is if you want to change the brush options, let's say you want to have a brush that's 15 um, and add that to your uh, arsenal, you can, you have to do it first before you hit the plus sign. So make the changes you want first. Let's say I want it to be 15, right? And let's say I want the flow to be less. And let's say I want the opacity to less. Now that I do that, I can hit the plus sign and it will give me the 15. And you can see how the options work as well. Um, it has less flow, it has less opacity, and it is a little bit thicker. So um, let's see, what else? Oh, and if you want to get rid of a brush, you hit the minus on the delete brush. Um, so that's the basics of drawing with the pen tool. If I select this selection tool, I can lasso anything um, on, the, on the stage. Now, there's a difference between bitmap and vector also in this capacity. Uh, when you have a bitmap file, you can only select the entire artwork because it's just pixels. So you don't have, a, you don't have options. Um, the way that you can separate stuff after you've used bitmaps is if you press down on your select tool and scroll down to the cutter tool, which kind of looks like a paper airplane or a exacto blade, um, that will allow you to separate artwork. It's kind of clunky and it's not the greatest, but it does work. Um, so, but with vectors, vectors are a little bit different. So I'm going to turn off the, the layer. Ha, and this is how you turn on and off the layers. See, look at that. 
Um, you'll notice that there are little eyes next to the to the layers that have um, artwork on them. If I click one of them, it will go away. If I click it again, it comes back. Anything you, you'll see, these have nothing on them, so they're closed eyes because Toon Boom's being clever with that, and it's kind of cute. So, um, and then you poke them in the eyes, <laughs> and they go away. Um, anyway, so vector is different in the sense that a vector line is uh, is individual. So I can select just this one, or I can select just this one. Um, you'll notice that a an orange box comes around this uh, as the selection for this tool, um, and it presents itself with uh, little boxes that you can then grab and rotate stuff. You can also squash, you can also stretch, um, which is kind of nice. With the cutter tool, you can also bisect and get rid of parts. This is how you get rid of certain things or separate stuff vector-wise. Um, well, uh, another thing about vector tools that I really like is that you can draw straight lines with it very easily. Let me put this back the way it was get rid of this and if you pr hold down or if you click the brush tool hold down the shift key you can create straight lines at any angle you want I'm just holding down the shift key and it just will keep drawing in a straight line I've never seen any other program do this and I would argue that it's one of the most powerful tools in Storyboard Pro Another really cool thing about vector drawing, and one of the reasons why most people use the vector artwork or vector tools, is if we go back to the cutter tool, and let's say I want to get rid of this line right here. Well, of course I could erase it, you know that, but um, I can also use the cutter tool and just drag it across, and it will disappear. It actually is very useful for that. Another thing about Storyboard Pro that's really cool is if you select the contour editor, which is the white, um, let me put this back, which is the white select tool, basically. What that does is that selects points. Um, well, see, normally it selects one. That's the regular thing. If I select the contour editor, now I've got points around the line. And I can make it thick and thin if I want or increase the size of it. If I click on them, uh, on each individual box you will see little spline uh, handles that will allow you to change it much like the way you would in um, in uh, uh, Illustrator excuse me so um, it's a really cool program and uh, it's one of my favorites uh, there is another tool you can draw with, but um, it's not my favorite. Uh, that is the pencil tool. It's mostly used with the sister program, uh, Harmony, because you can change the line width after the fact, which is cool. But I don't know. I don't really find much use for it. Um, oh, and you'll notice that I'm, I just deleted these layers. If I select, I can just delete them by hitting the uh, the trash can there. Uh, and You can't, like, uh, when I first started using Storyboard Pro, I figured I could hit delete and then the layer would go away, but it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Okay, so um, the last thing is the pencil tool. Um, it produces a different type of a line. It's kind of cool, uh, but what's cool about it is that after the fact, if I select it after, I can increase the size of the line. Um, I, I find more problems trying to get thick and thin lines with the pencil tool, so you might like it, you might not like it. Um, it also works with the cutter tool, and you can separate stuff. So um, that's pretty much all you Well, you know what, one other basic thing um, is, uh, well, there's the the text editor so that you know you maybe you want to create your super cool character and you want to call him super cool character guy 
on your model sheet or whatever you're doing so you can take your text tool and one thing about it I find is that <coughs> excuse me um, one thing I find about it is if you just press well now you can start typing super cool guy but I find that if I use the tool and I, I can you press and hold you can drag and then you have the length of the field that it will go and then it will do a carriage return and go to the next see so watch which is kind of cool because this won't do that oh wait whoops well actually I guess it does oh because well it's beholden to where this is this little box here so I can drag this outward and it will give you more of an area so uh, uh, other things in Storyboard Pro you might want to use if you hold down the space bar you can move the um, the stage around uh, if you hit the C key the C key will rotate counterclockwise if you hit the V key it will go clockwise um, if you zoom in really close you can go down here and it will reset the view which is useful again I mentioned this at the beginning but there is a camera mask that you can so that you can only see what will be exported um, let me see what else is there to learn about storyboard pro um, oh well uh, another thing um, to create another panel you would hit the P key uh, on your keyboard or you can go up to storyboard new new panel you can do new scene and uh, uh, our new sequence but I would just just for simplistic sake just go with new panel and also another thing that you might notice is that whenever you go up to the file menu you can see that uh, what the um, the shortcut for that particular tool is already so you'll see there is no new panel before because there's nothing next to it but the new panel has a P next to it which is exactly what you use hitting the P key to create the new ones um, if you want to get rid of them the backspace will work or delete key um, and if you you can actually also do what's called an onion skin in this program you probably aren't going to use this but you might um, and the way that you would do that is to select these uh, this pack of I don't know I call them it's a pack of pancakes with an eye over it but that's the onion skin if you select it now I can see the previous artwork on the previous page or the previous panel and uh, now I can and, and to point that out is if I do this say you wanted a draw another expression on the same character I could now trace it although I'm not tracing it very well but basically now you'll see that if I turn this off I have just that drawing and um, if I go back and forth between the two now you see it's moving so it's actually useful for um, some of the uh, you know for expressions and whatnot because then you can have the basic character and then you can work off of that to deform it and and uh, make it a little a uh, little different for expressions so uh, let's see I think that's pretty much it um, if you're using a Cintiq you are able to flip the stylus over so I've got my drawing side this is my my action side of drawing but if I flip it the other way it acts as an eraser so you can do that as well and the eraser also works on um, with the shift key so you can make straight lines with the with the tool with the eraser tool as well I don't know why you'd want that but you might sometimes it's useful with like a detailed scene so um, 
think. Is there anything else? There's an awful lot of stuff I didn't cover simply because there's no reason to right now. Oh, the last thing. Here's here's a really important one. I'm going to create hit P, create a new panel, and um, I'm going to draw. I'm going to quickly draw a rough drawing, and I'm going to do it in red because for some reason my mind likes to draw in red. I'm not sure why. Um, Uh, just drawing quickly here. No, that's terrible. Alright, well, anyway, you get the idea. Alright, so, you got your rough drawing here. Now, again, you'll notice that I am, I can get rid of this line here. That's because this is vector. This is still vector. I'm using, I'm using, uh, vector tools you'll see i have the the swatches vector right um and i'm using these soft brushes uh, these are the hard brushes these are the soft brushes again if i create a bitmap layer i have different options here and i don't really use the bitmap stuff because it really taxes the um the processor but with these soft brushes i can still get rid of this line which is kind of cool because each line is individually selectable. So if I decide that I want this to be a little lower, I can grab it and move it and select it. And it's one of the beauties about using Storyboard Pro. So another thing though is, let's say I want to clean this up. Well, one thing you can do is you can just select it, lasso it, go to the color and change the color, which is also pretty useful. But let's say you want to clean it up. So I'm going to leave it red. I'm going to create another layer above it, and I'm going to hit the, the um, vector plus sign, creates a new layer, and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to turn on this auto light table tool, uh, tool. And if I select it, well, now you're going to see that my light, um, that my drawing has now less opacity, which allows me to see over it and draw through it. And now I can go to my tool properties. I can select a... Uh, a vector brush and I can start to clean this drawing up. And uh, it's a it's a pretty cool tool to draw with. Anyway, so you get the idea of what I'm talking about. Yeah, anyway. Um, so uh, you can also move the layers by selecting them and dragging them up and down. You can also change the layers' names by double-clicking on it, and the layer will come up. So I can do Kalina. And Rough. Okay, so I think that's pretty much the basics of Storyboard Pro. There's an awful lot to look at and to do, but these are the basics. Oh, one last thing, in case you want it for some reason. Let me get rid of this cleanup. Um, you can also draw behind in Storyboard Pro. So uh, why you would want that, uh, well, one reason you might want it is if you have a lot, you know, a... a a cityscape behind your character and now if I turn this this uh, tool uh, light table off you'll see that you can see through my character right and so that's annoying um, but what I can do is I can select a big brush I can change my brush color to white I can go back to the properties and I can select this first tool which is called draw behind and when I do that now you'll see that it draws behind the artwork that I have on here. Notice it's the same layer. It's the same layer I'm drawing on, but now I've drawn over, but I've drawn over the BG layer, but not over the artwork that I drew, my line art. 
so that's actually useful as well. Um, one thing that I know, sometimes I forget that I have it there. You can notice that there's a little preview down here that says draw, brush draw behind. So I know that that's invoked. If I turn it off, it will, uh, whoops, it will stop. And uh, so it's just a nice little way you can check and see what tool is invoked. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. And um, like and subscribe. See you next time, guys.